What's up everyone, Game Dad here, coming at you guys with part three of my current Xbox 360 collection. So we have been blasting through a ton of the games that I have in the collection. This series actually showcases the second biggest piece of my collection, with my NES collection being the, the largest section. So we got a lot of games to get through, so we're gonna dive right in and check out part three. The first Templar was released by Calypso Media in 2011, and this is a game that I would classify as kind of a hidden gem on the 360. It's super fun, it has a very medieval times Assassin's Creed kind of feel to it, but at a much lower budget. Forza Motorsport 3 was released by Microsoft Game Studios in 2009, and this game takes the same crazy realism that you would expect in any kind of Forza game, and just gives you a brand new edition. Pretty cool, but... A little too realistic for my taste. Frontline's Fuel of War was released by THQ in 2008, and this is your typical kind of FPS, military, shooter, Call of Duty wannabe kind of game. I mean, there's a million of these games, it feels like, and this one, I mean, I don't really see what it brought to the table. Front Mission Evolved was released by Square Enix in 2010, and at first glance, I thought this would be kind of a budget title, but actually it's pretty cool. Like, you're playing around in this mech that can fly and hover and skate and do all kinds of cool stuff, has weapons. I mean, I really liked it, actually. And up next, we have G-Force, released by Disney Interactive Studios in 2009, and speaking of budget titles, here it is crappy game to go along with what was not a stellar movie to begin with. Not sure why they made a game out of this. I guess kids were asking for it. Up next we got Gears of War released by Microsoft Game Studios in 2006 and this is the game that kicked off an amazing franchise. Excellent storytelling and some stuff totally messes with your head but overall what an amazing game franchise and ugh, I just I love Gears of War. And here's the follow-up, Gears of War 2, released by Microsoft Game Studios in 2008, and this game got a bit of a spec bump, as you would expect, and gameplay overall is the same. They tweaked a few things, but the biggest thing is the continuation of the story, picking up right where the last game left off. Up next is Gears of War 3, released by Microsoft Game Studios in 2011, and gotta be honest, I haven't actually played this one yet, so I'm just showing a bit of the multiplayer here. Please don't at me. I am slowly working through the franchise to get ready for Gears 5 coming out. Oh look, another one I haven't played, Gears of War Judgment by Microsoft Game Studios in 2013. And this one, I guess, from what I was reading, it's kind of a side story or like a B-side to what was going on in the Gears of War universe. So another one I haven't played yet, I want to get through the other ones before I play these. Up next, we have Grand Slam Tennis 2, released by EA Sports in 2012, and it's exactly what you would expect. It, it's a tennis game, and I mean, if you like Pong, I guess, you know, it, it's the same premise. You hit the ball back and forth. They just added a pretty skin to it. And here we have Grand Theft Auto 4, released by Rockstar Games in 2008, and I've played the other Grand Theft Auto games. I haven't honestly played 5 that much yet, but this was the first one that really grasped my attention. I mean, the open world gameplay, this game was phenomenal, and I had fun just playing it again. Up next, we have Guitar Hero 2, released by Activision in 2007, and this is the game that started my obsession with rhythm games. And I'm sure most people around the same time would say the same thing. I mean, it's Guitar Hero. I mean, what else more is there to say? And here we have Guitar Hero 3, Legends of Rock, released by Activision in 2007. And this game, yeah, it got some like new scenic backgrounds and new play areas and stuff like that. Overall, same game, just they improved it, really. I mean, it's the same as 2, just a little bit better. Now here we have Guitar Hero World Tour, released by Activision in 2008. This one was definitely a game changer. New guitars, full instruments, you could do singing, drums, guitar, bass, you could play everything with this. And, oh man, this one, I spent so many hours playing this game. And continuing from the Xbox collection videos, now we have Halo 3, released by Microsoft Game Studios in 2007. And this, of course, was continuing the Halo storyline with Master Chief. And, I mean, overall, it's the same game you've come to know and love, but they just add a few tweaks and improvements and get better graphics. Up next is Halo Wars, released by Microsoft Game Studios in 2009. Gotta be honest, I was way more excited for this game when it came out than I should have been after playing it. 
because I loved StarCraft as a kid, and this game, I thought it was going to be the same kind of thing, but it did not really live up. And here we have Halo 3 ODST, released by Microsoft Game Studios in 2009. And this was essentially Halo 3 from the perspective of a different squad. And this game, some people didn't like it, but I actually had a really fun time playing this game. I really did enjoy this. And plus, this is where I got my sweet ODST Halo 3 controller. Now here we have Halo Reach, released by Microsoft Game Studios in 2010, and for me personally, this is when I felt like the series was showing fatigue, and this, I kind of just bum-rushed the storyline, I never really played multiplayer, at this point, I just did not care about online multiplayer anymore. And here's Halo 4, released by Microsoft Game Studios in 2012, and this was another one where I just kind of rushed through the storyline. As you can see, the graphics are very impressive, even for a 360 game by today's standards. And, I mean, it was just, that was it, really. I mean, I just wanted to play the next piece of the story. Nothing major. And here's Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 1, released by Electronic Arts in 2010. And this is one of those better with Connect games. I'm not sure what made it better. It just wasn't a very good game to begin with, in my opinion. Up next is Homefront, released by THQ in 2011. And this game, it felt like most shooter kind of games, but at the same time, it felt different. It felt like it was in its own little segment of the market. I mean, it was okay. Nothing spectacular, but I mean, it was all right. And here we got Jeopardy, released by THQ in 2012. And this is exactly what you would expect. Just like every other Jeopardy video game, it's Jeopardy. I mean, in this one, they actually give you like ch uh, options to choose from, but I don't know. I mean, it's still Jeopardy. Who cares? And here we have Jericho by Clive Barker, released by Codemasters in 2007, and this game is freaky, man. I mean, Clive Barker, that dude is known for some crazy horror stuff, and this game is no different. I mean, the game is a total just, like, mind trip, and, I mean, it's okay, but it's just trippy. And up next, we have Cameo, Elements of Power, released by Microsoft Game Studios in 2009. And this one, I thought it was a pretty neat concept because you have the main character, but you keep absorbing powers from other things throughout the game in order to beat all the baddies. So I thought that was pretty cool. Up next is Connect Adventures, released by Microsoft Game Studios in 2010. Now, just like the last video, I don't have my Connect hooked up while I'm capturing footage, but it was a lot of like generic like Wii Sport title games, but for the Connect. And here's another one, Connect Sports, released by Microsoft Game Studios in 2010. And same thing, didn't have my sensor connected, so I couldn't capture the footage, wouldn't let me play it. Um, but same concept as the uh, Connect, like any Connect game, really. I mean, you just you play with your avatar and do some generic little carnival games. And here we have Kung Fu Panda, released by Activision in 2008. And, okay, yes, it's a video game adaptation of an animated movie, but I gotta be honest, this game was super fun to play, and I had a lot of fun just going on a 3D platforming adventure. And here we have L.A. Noir, released by Rockstar Games in 2011, and regrettably, this is one that I have not had time to sit down and play, but I have heard nothing but amazing things about this game, and I can't wait to carve out that time and finally play through this amazing story. And here we have Lara Croft, Tomb Raider Legend, released by Eidos Interactive in 2006. And this is exactly what you would expect. I mean, for the console generation that it was in, it still felt pretty blocky, like as if it was like a PS2 or like a PS1 Plus kind of thing. But overall, the controls are exactly what you'd expect. And last up for this video is Left 4 Dead, released by Electronic Arts in 2008. And when this came out, this game was a massive hit because it was so different from any other game that had been released. The whole squad mentality combined with stealth and zombies, it was just awesome. So there you have it everyone, that is everything in part 3 of my current Xbox 360 collection. And this also marks that we are more than halfway through this series of collection videos. So let me know down in the comments below what you thought of today's video, including the other videos that we've done so far for this series. And while you're down there, please be sure to also hit those like and subscribe buttons, as well as that little notification bell so you can alert every time I got a new video coming out. Now, as always, I'm Game Dad. I thank you guys for watching, and I'll catch you later.